Oh, I'm not going to show you where I fix stuff. Today, behind the curtain, we have a Frieden ACG. Um, this was the predecessor to the SBT. So you can see it has some sort of back transfer here, but it doesn't have the um, keyboard back transfer that the SBT does. Um, of course, it also receives some shipping damage. You can see this side plate is well, you can't really see from that angle, but the side plate is kind of mashed in there. And the add key has been bent over. It still seems to move, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, both of these keys were pushed in when I got it, and then when I was testing the, to see if it was locked, I actually pushed that one in, so I have to see if we can release that. Um, but I think the first thing to, that we're gonna do is take the sides off and have a look around. Um, this keyboard is unlocked, so that means it's not part way through the cycle. Um, but if I just plug it in, it's gonna try to do coverage clear, enter dividend, and accumulate multiply at the same time, which is not a good scenario. So uh, see if we can get those to clear. It may just be a simple, I wonder if I can just do, hey, there we go. Pushing up stop, cleared everything, so that's good. Um, we're still going to take the covers off and have a look, see if there's anything that looks obviously bent besides this. Um, so I either I just push the, the stop button all the way up and then actually release everything. So that's good. Um, usually these machines, um, you're just fighting a lot of dried grease gluing parts in place. Um, and it just generally takes a while to get everything worked loose. Um, so see so yeah, how this is right now because it's not probably through a cycle, everything seems pretty free, but you never know once it starts uh, a cycle, what's gonna happen. This is the tabulator up there. Um, Freedom has these little knobs so you can set digits manually if you want to. Turn that back to zero. Uh, actually, if you have something in there, you just pull this, clears it out. So it's a good sign that, you know, stuff we're trying here seems to be pretty free. Um, so we'll see. Okay, let's get the sides off and have a look. So I got the sides and the back off. Um, this comes off, there's, you have to take the screws out of here and there's a spring behind them. You can see there. And that's because these can detent up or down. Take those off. All right, this one had a screw in it and there seems to be a spring in there, but it's stuck in there, so I'm not sure if that's going to be an issue or not. We'll see. And then there's two releases on either side you can just kind of flip up and then just kind of. That's off. It's stuck on. Oh, it's stuck on something. Maybe it could have got pushed in on that side or something. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So that comes off. You can see here are the. Here's the catch. So, like that, it's. Lock and then you just push it up and it releases there. And there's the carriage. So here's that current mechanism. Um, so it looks to get like to get this off, you have to at least pull all these little knobs off here, which would be easier said than done. Now, this machine was Introduced, I believe, in, oh, okay, off. in 1954, I think, which is two years later than the SRW, which is the cool one everybody wants that does the square boots. Um, the advantage of this is it's not nearly as expensive as an SRW because nobody wants this one. Now, actually, there's hardly any information about this. Um, and there's a little bit of information on the SBT, which is the successor. Um, but I'm not exactly 100% sure what kind of back transfer this is supposed to be. Um, you can see the button is kind of like split, and this side says negative, this side says positive, but then it kind of has a tongue in the middle, like it's, you're expected to push them together like that too. So um, how exactly it works, I don't know, which is going to be fun to try and make it work. We don't know how it's supposed to work. All right, let me fight with these, and then we'll take a look once everything is off. All right, so I got the front cover off here. Um, you see those are the decimal pointers there. Uh, now there is a 
all clear mechanism. So that's, that would be this. But you can see this little tabby there just pushes this over. And if you have some a small set, it clears all of them. So I Interesting feature. Um, so, I guess first what we'll do is just have a little look over this. You can see it's pretty dirty under here. Um, not necessarily terrible. You can see the multiplier there just over there. I can rotate this side and check it out. So, I don't really see anything that looks obviously bent, aside from this, of course. Uh, it's still free, so hopefully you can just bend this over and that'll take care of that, hopefully. Um, the side actually has a decent amount of padding in it. So you can see here, that's where the screw hole was, and that's this little nubby thing here, and it's actually pretty far out. Um, so you can tell in the video, but the sticks pretty far out from the side of the mechanism, actually, so... Uh, hopefully this padding, you can kind of see some indents where some pieces had hit the padding. Hopefully that has protected this. Um, we'll see. So, so far nothing is jumping out as being, like I said, obviously bent, so we'll see. I'll turn this around to the back. You can see the motor all the way back in there, the plug there. I'll have to see if I have a cord for that. Hopefully I do. Um, there's a switch down there. Not sure if that's open or closed right now. We'll see. Let's see if Yeah, so side here. This is where you put your um, hand crank if you have one, and that is not really moving. So that may be a problem because I don't think it's in the home position and that seems pretty stiff as well. So we may be jammed up, we'll have to see. Um, I might try applying power to this just to see what it does. Um, it could also be that it is that it is in the home position and it's locked. This one seems free. This one, not so much, whatever that is. It's attached to something over here. Well, whatever that did. Alright, we gotta stop messing with stuff. Go over to this side and see if you can see. Take a look at this. They have a spring here, and the end of the spring goes all the way down to there. Certainly interesting. Another spring here, I guess it's kind of like a support for that. It's very strange. But anyway, let me see if I can find a cord for this and we'll just see what happens. Uh, I wouldn't be too worried about applying power to this if it is jammed because these do have a slip clutch. So if the machine is jammed, the motor will just uh, spin past the slip clutch and shouldn't hurt anything. So that's what we'll try first. Yeah, so I found a cord for this, um, got the cord put into the machine. Um, before I plug it in, I did just take my ohm meter and make sure that it's not dead short or something. So we'll just see what happens, if anything. Well, it's something. It's not completely jammed. So let's try 25. Oh, that didn't work so well. Plus key doesn't want to go down all the way. I've unplugged it now since I'm sticking my fingers in. Not sure what's up with that. Let me try something else. Let's try a carriage shift, see if that works. No. I think these keys want to go all the way down in. So I wonder if all these got bent. There's something they're trying to actually got bent. That's why they don't want to go. That one went down. What happens now? Well, because it's already in the home position, so that makes sense. So does this work? Let's try. Well, it doesn't do anything. Oh, here it went. And I heard a piece fly out, so that's good. 
to see what happened there. Uh, oh. It's like this whole piece up here is messed up. Here, let me bubble this one so my fingers in. You can see this looks kind of bent, and then this end isn't even attached to anything. So that should be attached under there. So that's a problem. So if you're seeing. So this piece here, you can see it has a hole in it, but it's not attached. The hole is actually down here. Now it doesn't look like it's broken off, but this side is definitely bent, so that'll have to be addressed. Might do that first before I try anything else, and I'm gonna have to see why none of these keys wanna go down. That one went down. I think that one went down. This one. Yeah, I probably shouldn't try shifting the couch because it's part of the couch shift mechanism. So let me adjust that first, see if I can put that back together, and bend this straight, and then we'll try again. As you can see, I got um, that straightened back out. This piece was here was also bent um, back, so I bent that up. This looks like it goes in there, and then this piece it goes like that. Um, so let's plug this back in and try some more functions and see what we can get. Let's try adding again. Yeah, it did something. This didn't come back up though. So that might be an issue. All right, let's see if we can shift now. Okay, yeah. These keys are sticky. Let's see if stop will. Yeah, something's up with these keys being sticky. Not quite sure. So I can pull this plus sign off. No. I don't know what holds that on. But as you can see that the key itself is kind of bent, so I don't know if that, you know, some damage happened to this key or whether the plastic warped and now that's why it won't pull off of there. Um let's see if I can pop this. Uh, this is not going to be. Plug it back in. Yeah, let's see if now it will. There we go. So the keys are just sticky. Let me try this one. Yeah, that one's fine. All right, cool. Um, try carriage clear again. Now carriage clear should bring the carriage all the way to the left because that's how it has to clear it. Hey, that actually worked. Cool. All right, so this is actually, so far, this is a lot better than I was expecting. I was putting everything to be completely locked up. Um, it was kind of surprising. So I have to figure out why these keys are getting stuck. Um, it actually looks like this key does work, at least partially, because you can see when I have it in this position, if I add 25, well, that's okay, I get unplugged. It's huh. interesting. Add 25. Let's see if minus works. Now, add doesn't seem to want to work anymore. So that seems to work fine. 25, maybe this has to be like that. All right, let me figure out why that has stopped working, but it should be spring-loaded back up. So something is still messed up there. This is the keyboard lock, I believe. So it worked once. That one's spin loaded. Doesn't engage the motor though, so something funny has happened there. Right, so let me see if I can figure out why this key and that key are getting stuck. And let's see, do we ever try this one? This one will move the carriage all the way to your tab stop. So I'll set, I think let's set, these aren't even the right numbers. 987624C1. 
quite sure what happened there. Um, wonder if I can move, I wonder if I can move C over to zero and then well, we'll see if we can make something more sensible than what we have now. But anyway, let's push one of these about 25 here, see if this is anything. No. All right, so that's also a problem. So it's doing the first step, but it should clear and then it should shift over and then add, but it's only continuously clearing. So I have to figure that out too. First thing I want to do is figure out why these are suddenly not working, because add did work once. I figure out why these are sticky too. So let me figure that out and we'll go from there. So I'm playing around this a little bit of tracing is somewhere like I still didn't get addition working yet. You can see it doesn't addition and subtraction. But somehow division works. So if I do 355, there it is, 355, and then this seems to have written up. Enters it in 355 and then 113. There we go, 3.1415. So division seems to work. Div tab works, division works. But addition and subtraction don't. It's kind of funny. Clear carriage, oops, this tab has to be up. So that's what the knobs do. When you have the knobs on there, it locks the, these little tabs up or down to engage or disengage clearing for a particular carriage, uh, particular register. So we try multiplication just to see what happens. 25. Okay, so we've got 25, let's do 25, and just see what happens. Yeah, that works, 625. Cool. So the fancy stuff seems to work, we didn't try to transfer yet, but addition and subtraction don't. And also something up with the counter too, you can see how it counted for a division, but it's not counting anything now for um, addition. I don't know what this, maybe that's why. If I pull that up, Try it again and see if it counts now. 25, 25. Our counter is still not counting, so I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that. Let's just see what happens. We got 625 in the accumulator, nothing in the counter. What if I do positive transfer? Nothing happens. Negative transfer is blocked. Positive transfer does nothing. This linkage was bent a little bit. Oh, I did bend it back. It seems pretty free. I'm not sure what, what that's supposed to do, but right now it's not doing anything. So maybe related to the issue with addition and subtraction. But yeah, it's pretty cool that division and multiplication work, but addition and subtraction don't. Um, I'm assuming that there's some kind of an engagement thing to like disengage these keys, you know, when you're doing fancy operations, maybe, is the only thing I can think of. Um, there are a few concerning things, however. So out of the back of the machine, when I like tipped it up to look underneath, came the spring. I have no idea where that goes. Also, this piece, I like a little S thingy. I have no idea what that is or where that goes. And this piece, I know where this goes. You can see there's like a broken off screw hole. This is one of the tabs to hold the carriage in place. Um, I was looking at the back and I was kind of surprised. It looks like there's only one place the carriage is held down. Well, yeah, because the other one's broken off. So that's why the carriage is exceptionally loose. Um, I'll have to see if that's gonna be an issue. Um, so far, multiplication seemed to work. I have a Freedom Model S that occasionally jams during multiplication. I think the issue is the carriage being loose. It is a little bit loose. Um, I have to see. What we can try is see if transfer works here. No, transfer still does nothing. So I'll have to get figured out. Negative. Well, that did something. 
I have no idea what. Negative transfer. Um, I've just got garbage numbers and all the registers now. That's interesting. Let's clear that out. Let's try putting a number in here again. Put four, 43, 34 rather. Whatever. Let's try that again and see what it does. Put 999 and all zeros. And it's like I've got one all ones up in there. That's interesting. I wonder if something is sticky and it thinks there's ones up here or something. That's interesting. Um, hmm. But I didn't do anything with these. Let's try putting a number in here. Try 88 and see if it likes to transfer that up here, maybe. So I got 88 there, and then nothing, but we got nines here again, and all ones up there. It's weird. I wonder if I put something like, try putting random numbers up here. And see if that affects what goes into here. Now well, now it's just counting. I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to strip that. By putting these to zero. So it's counting down here while counting up there. Let's stop that. Again, I don't actually know how that's supposed to work, so I'm probably using it wrong, but let's just try putting Put six in there. Oops, just need to clear out. Let's put six in there and see what that does. Aha! So now we got nine 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 four. So it read that six wherever I had it. Uh, one of these prisons, I think I had a six. So the complement of six would be four, I guess. Um, the sense complement should be plus one, but uh, I guess that's the idea, maybe? I don't know why positive doesn't do anything, though. I have to figure that out. Um, so it's kind of doing something. It's uh, interesting. I don't know why it leaves all ones in there. And I don't know if you're supposed to have the source push both of these. Now it's doing that again. The positive just stays down, so something is up with that. That's funny. All right, um, just for fun, let's try a bigger multiplication with more carriage movement and see what happens. Let's try 625, 625. Is it all cleared out? Let's clear out, clear out, okay. Three, three, nine, oh, 65, yeah, so that works. The counter still doesn't do anything no matter what I have this counter control set to. I think that was that one. Yeah, this counter control, this one's not entry. So no matter what I have this set to, the counter doesn't engage, so. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'm pretty surprised that division and multiplication work. We can try a bigger division. Let's do nine. And we'll do 355 again. Yeah, 
these key columns here are kind of sticky. Three point one four one five nine. Oop, this is wrong. It should be two. One three point one four one five nine two. So we've got zero four. So something probably got a little bit sticky there and didn't quite work right. Um, got all ones in here again. What's up with that? Maybe a um, the carry trip or something got stuck. Let's try it again. Fifty five. Oh, we're stuck by something. Five, one, three. I'm sure, this is clear. Yes. I right, got three point one four one five nine two nine two zero. Yep, now it worked. So maybe the. Uh, carry trip or the division trip, whatever, because it, it works off propagating the carries all the way to the end. We've got all ones in here again. I don't know what's up with that. Something keeps putting all ones in this side of the register. I haven't been paying attention to what's been doing that. This part is right with the four. Interesting. You know, there's something to disengage this part of the register from the other part. I think it's this little tabby there. I don't know what exactly that does. Pop that in. Let's let's try to go with that pop down and see what happens. Uh, that didn't work because that was not clear. Five. Three fifty-five. Three. Something just happened. Must have missed the carry trip or something. This thing popped out too. I don't know what's supposed to hold that in. Oh, you know what? The spring is supposed to hold that in. There we go. Now maybe it's locked in. Let's try again. Let's see if it'll stay in. 355. Sure, we're actually cleared out. We are not. Why is that not just disengaged or something? Oh, maybe that's what that does. It disengages the clearing, maybe? Let's put it over there. Yep, that's what that does. It disengages the clearing. Okay. So that's probably not helpful at all. All right, never mind. So I'm going to have to play around with this a little bit more. Um, I focus on getting these working first and then look into the uh, transfer thing, but yeah. Anyway, um, definitely pretty surprised with how this works so far. Let's try a big multiplication. Uh, let's do three, nine, zero, six, two, five times uh, three, nine, uh, five, over two, five. Let's just do 625 here, whatever. Um, I have no idea if that's right because I don't know the answer to this, but it didn't jam, so um, yeah, maybe multiplication will be just fine. We'll have to see. And division mostly seems to work, except for the ones going in there. I'll have to figure that out. Um, yeah, anyway. Pretty satisfied with how this works so far. I was not expecting this to work this good at all. This would definitely be completely jammed up, but um, yeah. So I've got a few things to fix, so I'm gonna play around with this some more and see if we can bring back this functionality. All right, so making some progress here. I've been playing around with this a little bit. Uh, you can see I got the keyboard out. Um, oops. But as you can see now, um, this key no longer jams and add the longer jams. You see I got those working, kind of working now. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. So for this um, 
the issue, well, I'm not going to show exactly what the issue was. What I did was I loosened the bolt that holds, basically how they have it is they have like a screw that has a, um, kind of like a raised portion on it. And when you screw it in, there is a slot in the key stem that the raised portion goes into. So basically, um, that raised portion spaces the head of the screw off the side of the plate. Uh, so that there's space for this key to go in. So I loosened the nut on the end of that to give some more space there And that is what loosened that up. So um, Either this is like this key stem is bent somehow that is getting tight um, There's not enough space on the, the raised portion that the key slides on is not wide enough for the bent key stem or something I'm not exactly sure about that. I have to figure that out um, I just loosened that up and then I gave it more space and now it's working. Um, as far as the add key jamming, what had happened was, um, you can see right here, this is like a little rubber spacer that the side screws into. And when it had gotten the shipping damage, it actually bent the whole piece of the, that whole metal sheet there that this is attached to, it bent it in you can see that's right there at the add key key stem. So because that was bent in, that's what was causing the add key to jam. So I just took the keyboard out and then from this side fed a punch all the way in. Somewhere around here. Just push this down a little bit and then had a punch there against the side of the frame and tapped it back out. And that loosened that up. Um, the issue with add and subtract and non-engaging turned out to be this little piece right down there. So if you can see that, I get something. So right here, you can see that goes up and down. As far as I can tell, there's no spring on that. It's just gravity uh, pulls it down. Um, and that wasn't going down all the way. So you can see it's down right now. And everything engages. Now, if I change this to add mode, where it'll clear the keyboard, at the end of each cycle, it'll it'll throw that up, and it doesn't always come down all the way. So, see, now it's not down all the way. Now we get nothing, unless you push it down. When it's all the way down, then it works. So there's something up with that. See, now it might not. Yeah. So sometimes it engages, sometimes it doesn't. Um, that may or may not be related to. Yeah, and the same thing for subtraction it has to be down. It has to be down for subtraction to work as well. So that may or may not be related to um, the stuff being dented in. Um, again, this sticking may not be related to stuff being dented in. So a couple things have to look at, but um, we're making some progress here. As far as the back transfer, you can see I pulled the one key off, and it turns out that the stickiness there was just the key had kind of like collapsed in, it was pinching on this finger, because the actual key stem is free. You can see it springs back up just fine. And I think the way that the back transfer is supposed to work is if you push just this side, it does the negative transfer, but if you push both of them, then it does a positive transfer. So I don't think this is supposed to do anything. I think this is kind of just like, like how there's two division keys and one key doesn't do anything, but if you hold down both of them, then it does the regular division. I think that's the same thing here. This key doesn't actually like activate the machine, but it's kind of just like a, a flag that you want the positive transfer. So let's see if we can demonstrate this here. So I'll put in, let's put in something like one, two, three. And then now if I hold this down and push the negative one, you can see what we've got now is one, two, three in the counter. And these seem to be all zero, so that is correct. Um, now as far as the positioning goes, I don't really know. Like you'll notice that I set one, two, three over here, but I transferred it down over here, so it's not directly underneath it. I'm not sure how that's supposed to work, if that's expected or what the deal is with that. Um, so that has to be looked into. Um, I noticed that sometimes I don't, I don't get these ones over here that I was getting anymore. So that's maybe something sticky. We'll have to keep an eye on that and see if that problem recurs. But um, yeah, making some good progress here, I think. 
So I'll play around some more, see if I can um, solve the issue with this key getting stuck. And when I, so when I tighten that screw back down, um, and by the way, the screw that I'm talking about is just this little nut right here. There's a nut on the end of that. And then, so if we can get in here to see, probably not really easy, but that screw goes through the side of the plate and then, like I said, there's a raised portion. You can see how there's like a cutout in the key stem, so the, that cutout in the key stem slides on that, um, the raised portion of the screw. Um, so I'll have to figure that out and figure out the uh, issue with this piece not always returning to its home position when you're in ad mode. Um, but yeah, making some good progress so far, I think. All right, so what I've done for this key being stuck is I ended up just leaving the nut loose a little bit and then I put a jam nut on the outside to keep it in place. It's not ideal, but um, I think, you know, there's probably either this key is bent or some combination of things are slightly bent, causing that to jam. Um, I can't really see if the key is bent, like it doesn't look bent from here, but um, yeah, so I think that's going to be our solution for that. Should be fine that way. Um, like I said, not ideal, but you know, without I don't know how you would figure out what part is bent because, like I said, nothing I can see looks bent unless you want to take everything all apart here and then put it straight out and everything. But I think that'll be satisfactory for that repair. Um, that should work fine. Right, plugged in. Should be fine for that. Um, for the issue with this piece not engaging on um, return from addition. What I've done is, if you look down in here, um, this lever here looked like it was holding it up and if you just pushed it out of the way a little bit, then this would fall back into place. So I just bent this over a little bit. Um, let's see which, where are we at? I think that's add. And so far it seems to work, so hope that should be good. Um, before I put the keyboard back in, I just want to go over a little bit how this works. Uh, so, if we can back up here a little bit. So from this brass bar up, the machine kind of works like a arithmometer, um, or you know, basically the same thing as like Maras or um, like. Tim Unitas or any of those other um, Leibniz wheel type machines. Uh, so if you look down in here and see something to point with, uh, this right here is one of the Leibniz wheels. Actually, you can see right there there are the the teeth on it, and um, they kind of did an enhancement where instead of having a, uh, a single Leibniz wheel for each column. Well, and there's technically a single, single Leibniz wheel for each column, but instead of having a single shaft with a single Leibniz wheel for each column, they put two sets of Leibniz wheels on the same shaft. So for example, this shaft here with the Leibniz wheel you can see services both this column and this column. And the way they've done that is that they basically just stack them. So right here you can see one leaving this wheel and then up above that underneath the carriage is another one and you can see this column has sliding levers here and as I slide it down the, there's a hook on a gear here that slides the gear into engage with different geared sections of the leaving this wheel. Um, another hand that they made is that they split them so you can see right here this is a set of teeth so like each one of these these are made out of stacked steel plates. So each one of these plates is one, you know, basically one set of Leibniz teeth. Um, and then there's another set up here. So basically instead of having all 10 right in a row, they split it. And what that allows them to do is have two separate rails here. So you can see this rail moves this gear right here, which will engage with any one of these, looks like there's five there, sand plates. Five, yeah, and then this lever here moves a separate gear, and I'll show you if you can see it coming down there. 
And that will engage with one of the other, there should be four of those then up there. Um, so that way, instead of having to move one gear, the full distance of 10 sets of teeth, um, like for nine, you'd have to move it like all the way down to the ninth um, set of teeth. This allows them to only move, like this one only has to be a maximum of five, and this one has to be a maximum of four. So it's just uh, slightly more efficient and basically you don't have to put as much force on the key because you don't have to, and you don't have to cause as much travel in the um, engagement gear. And the same thing, the, this set of levers runs up to the same arrangement for the leading this wheel up underneath the carriage. Um, and that's basically how it works. You know, the leading wheels are, uh, each of these plates has a different number of teeth on it. So for example, this one might have, you know, nine and eight and seven or so on. Um, and depending on where this gear slides to, it depends on how many teeth engage with it, which determines how many positions the register moves. So um, it's a pretty, pretty basic setup and uh, it's a very old design. I think Leibniz designed it in like the 1600s or something like that, a um, long time ago. And the, the design had actually been in, you know, volume manufacture since the 1850s uh, when Thomas de Colmar started making his thermometers in France. Uh, so by the time this machine came out, the basis first design was already a hundred years old. Um, and of course they obviously added a whole bunch of extra features to it, but I found that kind of interesting that, um, that that design lived on for, I guess you could say the same thing about the pinwheel calculator design too, um, almost lived on for a hundred years. Um, but yeah, so just, uh, I wanted to discuss a little bit about how that works. And then the same thing as the way the um, arithmometer works, there's a rail up under the carriage um, that has two segments with, basically it's like a brass spacer with two gears on either end. And then those slide up or down to engage with gears on the bottom of these. So if one you slides one up or one direction, it'll go drive these forwards for addition. If it slides the other direction, it'll drive them backwards for subtraction, or vice versa. I'm not sure which direction is actually which, but it's the basic idea. Um, so like these square rods with the gears on them run up and then have those pieces on the end. So the number of teeth that this gear turns, that rod, that square rod turns, which also turns the sliding gear at the top, the same number of positions. And depending on how it's engaged with the gear on here, it'll go either forwards or backwards that number of positions. So it's basically the basic principle of this. Um, and then of course you got all the extra stuff for um, multiplication and division and the back transfer, but that's the basic design of how this works. Um, and then the keyboard just has the little pegs on the bottom of each key. And then those pegs push down on these ramps to slide these into, into place. So I'm going to put the keyboard back on and hopefully then everything will work and we can do a little demonstration. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but um, I got a screwdriver in here as a wedge to try and spread that key bag out. So I'm gonna let it sit like that for a while and see if we can't get that spread open far enough to not um, get stuck on the other half of the transfer button. You know, I got the carriage off, now you can see um, the drivetrain here. So these gears here are what slide up and down to engage one direction or the other for addition or subtraction. And those square shafts are the same square shafts that come all the way down and have those sliding gears on them. So the power transfer is there's a main shaft that runs all the way across and then bevel gears that drive each of the Leibniz drum shafts um, that transfer motion to these square shafts, depending on where the gear is set, which then drive up to here and then drive these, which engage with these gears on the bottom of the carriage there. Um, and then these things here are the carry chips. Those will pop up and down um, to affect the carry. And those are activated by these little teeth here, these 
uh, go in the little grooves there and then activate those to practicality. So um, really it's not as like the main mechanism are super complicated, of course, all the control mechanism is, um, we won't get into that, but basically that's the principle of operation here. Um, you can see these little clover-like pieces here. Um, those I believe are for um, like overshoot um, prevention. So there's machine spots on the top ends of the Leibniz drums that those ride against. And I believe the point is so that, you know, because the Leibniz drum, like this machine runs at, you know, a significant speed. So this will be, you know, when the Leibniz drum is engaged, it'll be spinning this kind of fast. And then once the teeth are disengaged to make sure that it doesn't overshoot and go like too many positions extra, um, these will, these flat spots will engage, engage against a machine spot on the drum and stop this from turning anymore um, to make sure you don't get an overshoot. I believe that's the point of those. And if you go back and look at like the LA thermometer from Thomas de Cormor, they have the same exact thing in there too. Um, it's a pretty, pretty old design. I think it's kind of interesting that they used it old design for so long, but anyway, um, I'll oil up the rest of this stuff, put the carriage back on, and do some more cleanup. You can see I've cleaned up the top couple of rows here, and they held pretty well. I just used some lacquer thinner, actually. It didn't hurt the plastic at all on these. Uh, it cleaned them up pretty well, so I'll finish cleaning up the keyboard, and hopefully that should be just right for this. All right, let's see if we can do a little demo here. Um, I just loosely put the sides back on, um, you can see it's missing this. I think that one crumbled. You can see the piece of it here. It's just like a little rubber thing they put to kind of like isolate the case pieces, but they usually dry up and crack. You can see that, that one's in there, and then of course the damaged ones are both missing. Um, anyway, let's see if we can do a little quick demo here, and I think that'll be about it for this one. So I've got it plugged in. We should be able to add. I've got the add switch down. That is correct. Um, you can see the counter is incrementing now. Um, the reason it wasn't before is because of this switch was down and that disables the counter for, oops, for everything except for division. We can clear, maybe, there we go, clear. Um, so we can try multiplication. We can do 625 times 625 and multiply. Damaged cases falling apart there. Let's just take that side back off or something. I'm not sure what the deal is. Anyway, 365, that is correct. Okay, uh, we can try a division. 355. Okay. Oops, I didn't have a tab down. If you don't have one of these tabs down, um, it doesn't enter it. Try that again. You can see one of the weird features of this machine is the carriage can only auto clear in the home position. So if you press enter div anywhere except for the home position, it has to go all the way back to the home position to clear and then back out to where you want to enter it, which is kind of a, a weird quirk, but anyway. And we should be able to buy, come on. Oops, what happened here? if my case is getting in the way of something. Maybe this damage side because it's kind of dented is making something sticky, so might be the issue there. Anyway, that is correct. 3.1 for 159. I'm gonna slide one of these pointers over. 3.1 for 159.290. That is correct. Oh, it does a double clear thing. That's kind of weird. But anyway, um, so division works. We can try doing the back transfer thing. So the way I understand. 
the way it seems to work for me, I don't know if this is 100% correct, but it seems to only transfer from the accumulator to the counter. But I guess it would be useful in like, like sum of products type multiple things. The weird thing is it only goes from like this digit moves like over here. I don't know if that's supposed to happen or not, but either way, so we can start in this column, I think. So we'll set our decimal pointer there. If that shows up in the camera. And then say we wanted to do like, I don't know, seven times five, and we'll set repeat if we're doing multiple things times five. So if we do seven times five, um, there we go, 35. So that should go into the accumulator now. So we'll try that. So we got seven times five in the accumulator. And actually what I should have done was put this to non-entry mode. You can see with repeat down, five pops back up in the window here. I'm sure if you can see that, but it keeps the multiplier after you run it. Um, we'll put this, yeah, we'll put that to non-entry. And now we should be able to do a transfer, as I've cleared this, into the counter. So we got 35. Okay, I was one position off, so I transferred over here. So we'll set this decimal point right there, 35.0. And then if we want to add to that, say, um, 6 times 5, which would be 30, that should get us up to, what, 65? So now we would do another multiply. And then we'll do another transfer. Oops. Went to 38. So must have been off by, something was off by one digit somewhere. Instead of 60, we got 38. So we'll transfer down to this column instead of that column. That's weird. Let's try it again. Come on, bear. Is there something funny here? It's weird. Now it doesn't want to clear in there. Home position. Let's see about that. Um, okay, let's try that again and see if we can do this. So, we already got five in the multiplier from before. We'll try six here, so that was seven. All right, so we got 35. We've got nothing in the counter because it's non-entry. Try transfer. Okay, now it transferred down, down to there like it should have before. So maybe something was a little bit sticky there yet. Um, I haven't actually looked into how the back transfer works on this, so, um, and I didn't really do anything with that. It's just loosening itself up as it goes. So maybe it was a little bit sticky the first time. All right, so we've got 35. We're going to multiply by 6 this time. And then we're going to add that. There we go, 65. So now, as far as I know, that's all you can do with this. Um, if you push both of them together, it does the positive transfer. So it adds the accumulator into the counter. Or if you want to subtract the accumulator from the counter, you'd push only the negative half of it. And that's all it does. I don't think there's any way for it to transfer from the counter to the accumulator. Um, and this definitely does not have transfer of any register back to the keyboard. Um, that only came in in the SBT, which was the successor to this. Um, and again, I'm not sure if this is correct that this transfer is kind of diagonally like that. Um, you can see that we got our total there in the counter register. It's kind of an interesting feature um, that they're using the counter register as a sum of products register. But anyway, let's see if this will work. Yeah. If you shift out, it works. And then it works. So maybe something a little bit sticky there yet. Um, I have to look into that, but. So kind of a cool machine. Um, I think we'll end the video here. Um, I think this might just be a little bit of a, a sticky part yet, but I will end the video here. Um, this is a quick little look at this Freedom, is it ACG or AGC? I think it's ACG. I always get it mixed up between ACG and AGC. Um, doesn't seem to be a particularly common machine and I will have to do something about this. Bastion panel here, but 
Yeah, everything so far really seems to basically work, except for this sometimes doesn't engage in the last column. So you have to shift out and shift it back in. But other than that, and the question about the transfer diagonally here, um, I think this will be okay. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. Actually, before we end this, I want to do a little comparison here between the first three main styles of freedom. Um, the other way on the right there is the Model F. That was the first style. They had that from when they were founded in 1934 up until, I think, somewhere in the late 30s, early 40s, when they switched to this style over here. This is the ST10, uh, which is the predecessor to the STW10. Uh, and then in, I think, 49, they changed to the style of the middle uh, ACG10. Um, and they kept that style up until the late 50s. And I think they, from the machines, they changed the color from that brown to more like a cream color. Um, and in the early 60s, they changed the style again to make it more boxy. Uh, I don't have one of those. Um, yeah, I just want to do a little comparison there. Um, at the time these were released, well, at the time the first two were released, I believe they were the most advanced machine Freedom was selling. Um, the Model F, I think, was their first model to have the automatic multiplier. And it's not a, like, stored entry like these two. Um, it's on the fly, like Martian, where as soon as you hit the button, it does the multiplication and then shifts over for the next digit. Um, the Model F is more contemporary styling of what other manufacturers were doing at the time with the black case and then the green keyboard, which I believe was started by Burroughs. I think Burroughs was the first one to do the green keyboard background with the black case and then most other manufacturers copied that um, up through the 30s and usually it wasn't until I guess the 30s or 40s that they started changing over to different styles. But anyway, I'm doing this little comparison here. Um, you can see this one does not have the repeat multiplication um, and it doesn't have the non-entry option. And then the carriage control or the counter control for like positive, negative is up here versus over there. Um, and then add is down here, slash is down. And this is the keyboard lock. And then dig stop is in the same place. Um, and then that one has div stop in the same place, counter control. Um, you know, if you want to count forwards for addition or backwards for addition, which would be forwards for subtraction, um, and then add in keyboard lock, similar to that. But yeah, I think this is my favorite style of these. Um, and you can see how this one also has the rubber strips. There's a piece missing out of that one. And so does this actually, the rubber strips there between the case. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And, oh, before I do that, actually, I wanted to mention that all of the extra parts that came out of the ACG10 did not go back in. Um, the machine seems to function, as far as I can tell, normally without them. Um, I just wanted to re reiterate that I think the issue that we saw in the demo with the div key and the carriage clear misbehaving are due to the Benton case. Um, because as I showed before, when I had the case off and I demonstrated division, it, it worked just fine. And same thing carry clear. So I think it's just the dented in cases um, causing some of the levers to stick. So I'm um, not going to worry too much about that. But anyway, now I think we're done. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.